Yeah. Um, although I think the other scene everybody remembers is the smiling naked guy in the closet because that shit is yeah. fucking creepy <laughs> as hell. Can, Absolutely well, I, my nightmare. Just like an old dude nude in my house that was, grinning at me in the dark. That was Absolutely the guy my who nightmare. touched your feet that time when you thought you were having a night terror. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, I, that's, a, that's a story for another podcast. Mm-hmm. I do think we're done with the um, the family stuff. And as you're saying, as I think you're trying to do, Clay, it's like it's good to move into what I think actually makes this movie terrifying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if I can, yeah. I just want to ex- I just want to say my theory about why I like this one's scares so much. Sure. Is because sure. Uh, as we mentioned on the the other Freddy Krueger movies and stuff like that, I fucking hate jump scares. Mm. I really <laughs> hate them, both on terms of like I don't like when they happen. I don't like being scared by them. And I don't like how manipulative they are, which is basically a jump scare is you know something's going to happen and then they overload your senses with a loud noise and a shocking thing that you see and you just kind of go like, ah! And then the character, like <laughs> Freddy Krueger, chases the person around the room, you know, <laughs> something right, like that. Right. But it, they're just kind of manipulative. What what Aster does is really strange. I think there's maybe two what I would consider true jump scares in this movie, which is one where the bird hits the window and then the other one where the candle explodes all Mm -hmm. of a sudden while they're doing the seance Mm -hmm. um what he does instead is like the antithesis of a jump scare which is that the most horrifying sequences in this movie are a character does something and the character will look into the corner of a room and the shot Mm -hmm. the shot will move to the corner of the room and the balance of the shot is such that you see something there right Right. right. So it's it's a jump scare in that the camera quickly jumps into something that's kind of a terrifying image, but you can't actually see what it is. So instead of the opposite reaction of a jump scare, which is to like shut your eyes and jump away and pull yourself out of it. Hmm. What Astor does is he makes these sort of like hidden picture shots where you are drawn into trying to see what you're looking at in there. And the more you look at it, the more horrifying it is right. at a certain point. Yeah. Right. And it's it's like the opposite of a jump scare. And I think it's so clever and so scary and so unsettling. I, I still think that a scary shot in this is what you were saying. Was, it's the guy who's standing in the doorway yeah. at the end. Yeah. It's like horrifying. Yeah. It just yeah. uh, And the more that you look at it, the scarier it gets. It's, it's really, it, it's quite an accomplishment. I think that that's the reason why I like the terror of this one so much more than something like um, Nightmare or mm. uh, Friday the 13th or anything. Yeah, mm. it's... Um, it reminds me of of what we were talking about on the innkeepers where mm-hmm. the most the, the the thing that that worked for me so much with uh, with the innkeepers or a movie like paranormal activity and a movie like this is when they realize that the true terror is not sending you back in your seat because they've just flashed something in front of you it's causing you to lean forward and you're 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 looking into the shot and your mind just starts going crazy trying to figure out what if anything you're seeing how to process it in innkeepers yeah. you're not most of the time you're not seeing anything it's just you know you're it's making your brain play tricks on you but in this one it's like you're processing it then you process what it is and that that doesn't free you from the experience that just makes it right. worse <laughs> And well, then, then he smartly of, cuts um, away. Yeah, then he smartly ends it at that point, you know, so you, you're you're stuck with it. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, uh, I totally agree. And it reminds me of uh, Mike Flanagan and like... Um, yes, yeah. The Haunting of Hill House mm-hmm. and Bly Manor on Netflix where like you can re-watch that show and not spot all of the weirdness in the background, even if you're re-watching episodes because there's just like a pair of feet under a table that you didn't notice the first time. And right. then there's the feet and the camera just keeps moving or the scene just changes and you get no, you never understand exactly what you just saw. You never understand why it was there. You don't know if it's going to come back. Um, yeah. It's like the hidden, the hidden ghosts and, and exactly what you guys are saying where it forces you to lean in and continue to engage rather than, like hide behind your hands and like peek through your fingers. Mm. Flanagan, my, my, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go no, ahead. I was just gonna say Flanagan is a really uh, interesting comparison because I, I agree, but it seems like his stuff is almost like the antithesis of this movie because oh yeah, yeah, his, tonally it's extremely different. Yeah, than... <laughs> tonally it's a lot more positive in the end. Like his stories are mm-hmm. generally not well, at least uh, Hill House and Bly Manor, they're not cynical stories at its heart, at their heart. 
and he probably because he's doing 13 episodes of TV is giving you all the backstory as as much as you could possibly <laughs> handle. Um, yeah, but he's still doing these sort of these these family stories sure, of sure. families who are deeply dysfunctional and have undergone a lot of trauma. So uh, yeah, I think I think they're an interesting study. They're another case where you can compare uh, Hereditary to another horror property and see what you can see. Yeah, definitely. Wes, what were you saying? I um I think Aster just has like this sublime understanding of what personally makes me very unsettled by things because <laughs> well I said that the the scariest shot is He's the naked guy. He's just emailing back and forth with Amy doorway. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> My uh Amy still is upset that I made her watch this movie. She's she she oh. couldn't go she couldn't go to bed the second time because she's like I can't go upstairs by nice. myself while this is happening. <laughs> and the, my second scariest thing that I think would be like an amazing gift is the uh, the portrait of the grandmother just sitting in a chair is the scariest fucking picture of a woman I think I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. Yeah. It's so he, I don't know what he did for that woman, but the, the her portrait and when Annie is flicking through the uh, the the picture the photo album, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all those pictures are deeply terrifying to me it's like you know that there's this cult that's going on there and this blank stare on this woman's face and if like if i had that picture and i hung it in my bedroom i don't think i'd be able to sleep at night because of the thing looking down at me he just has this really really uh very personal to me sense of like what makes an image terrifying and he runs with it fairly effectively and it never gets old or it never gets like tired that that's what he's doing it's always just just there everything's very unsettling yeah. 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 The um, uh, picture pictures. <laughs> it's the scariest group of pictures of a bunch of 50 year old people having like a house party I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> but, but there's something just deep. It's not that, nothing that they're doing there is unsettling. But just knowing what's going on is like, what the hell is what the hell is this? Yeah. I mean, there's 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 an inherent creepiness to to the history of, of photos like it, it's there's a reason that 100 year old photos are are a go to for creepy haunted houses and shit it's because there's just something otherworldly about them and there's a context to them that you don't have any understanding of and there's a photo of the cult looking at a photo of the family which is my favorite yes, photo yeah, yeah. <laughs> I missed that one. Oh, damn. Yeah. It's like the family is in the foreground with the Utah mountains in the background. And in the foreground of the picture you're looking at, you can see the heads of the cult members right. looking at that oh, picture. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Unsettling <laughs> to say the least. 